All right, welcome to another episode from The Chart Reader. So I'm going to do the first half of my weed sector review looking at Tilray, MSOS, High Tide, and CGC, all right? And this is a really interesting mix because I will say it, two look really good to look a little worrisome. And I mean, look at this Tilray chart, right? This one's definitely one of the two worrisomes, right? So I talked about it on the last video and it's still the echoing theme. Look, we have not gotten over the eight moving average since this earnings reaction took us away from it, all right? And I talked about being a little bit worried and I'm still a little bit worried and I'll be honest with you, this is a pretty scary candle right here, all right? So I'll talk about that one a good amount, okay? CGC is the other one that's not looking beautiful, but hey, I at least have to give it a lot of props and a lot of credit for still holding on to that 450, 455 line. Like, shocked is, is, is an understatement, but I think it continues to show the strength of that line, all right? And then from there, MSOS is looking good, okay? Again, I said it on the last video, I've been salivating for this $9 line. We're basically at it, if I'm not mistaken, all right? So I am I am all eyes on, on MSOS, but I will tell you, it, everyone wants a rocket. I know that, right? I want rockets, but slow and steady is actually a really good thing, all right? Especially in the weed sector, when we all know there's nothing but horribly fast drops and the occasional pump before the fast drop, right? So slow and steady is actually really, really good for the sector. And then high tide is looking good with earnings right around the corner. I don't know if they dropped any news or any like forecasts of it, but um, yeah, I like what high tide's doing, but again, just remember this thing went up and then it came down. So earnings itself is always a 50-15, and I will echo that. But before we go any further and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we gonna do? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There's only one down here, but there are, oh, there's another one, but <laughs> there are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to this channel, share this video online with your friends, comment good or bad. Look, anything you can do helps me so, so much with these YouTube algorithms, especially if you can actually share the video. My socials are growing. Most of yours are way bigger than mine. And yeah, if you can just click the share button, oh my gosh, it does so, so much. Okay. So let's get into Tilray. And again, I'm going to I started the video with it. I'm going to say it again. All right. A lot of good happens when you're over the eight and the 20, all right? A lot of really, really bad happens underneath it. And I mean, this is a perfect view of it. Ride the two lines up. Once you lose it, you come down hard. Ride the two lines up. Once you lose it, you're, we're working on it. And, and look, I, I, am, I, am, I am once again worried, but I'm not screaming horrible, scary, bearish stuff, okay? But it's getting a little more worrisome than it was before, okay? Because let's let's actually take a look at the last three days and then, man, yeah, we'll talk about these lower indicators. But this day right here, what was this, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday actually does close under the 50 moving average. It's only a penny, but you can see we close at 197, the number in green up top of the box over there, you can see average 50 was at 198. So we lost it by a penny. The day after was a doji and you know doji never counts. And then you know I also always say the day after the doji is pretty telling. That's a bad day today. Obviously we're going a little bit lower on the 50, but more than anything, you know I hate it. Look in the box over there. The low of the day was 191, $1.91. The close of the day was $1.91. There is no lower wick. All day they were selling, 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 selling until the end of the day they said, no, no, that's it, we're done, let's close, we'll come back Monday, right? So that's definitely a little worrisome. Look, 
Fridays I always generally assume is a sell day anyways, is a red day anyway. So I'll kind of keep that in the back of my pocket. But look, we are over, I mean, sorry, we are under all five moving averages and that's obviously never a good thing. But more than anything, we are continually failing to get over the eight moving average. Yeah, we have these little ones right here, but look, this is not a good day on the 22nd because if you're gonna break two lines, I need a better one. I just said doji doesn't count, so it doesn't count. Like we've basically been living under this line and you know I don't like that at all. I'm seeing the 20 start to slope down pretty hard as well. The eight sloping down, right? Like we need a bounce here and we need it quickly, okay? I'm gonna keep the zoom in actually because this is bad volume for, I mean, the entire month, it is easy to see, literally, like this is the full view of the month. The first trading day right here was on the second. There is only a sprinkle of green volume days. For the most part, more than half, if not, well, more than half was selling, hence why it's red instead of green down here, right? So volume's been horrible. I'm glad we're only going horizontal. Obviously the horizontal fell, right? But Dude, I, I, again, there's a little bit of me that that I'm seeing some good in the bad that we're seeing here. Like, if volume was this horrible, I'm shocked that we're not like plummeting hard down, 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 right? Like the fact that we're staying horizontal is, is relatively strength on its own. The fact that we're still trying to hold the 50 is relatively strength on its own. We're not that far from from some scary lines, right? And you know I don't want to talk about them, but I would be really scared if we lost 190 because from there, it might be a quick drop to, I mean, it's not a big number, I get that, right? But like, there's not a lot between where we're at and this dollar fifty, and and I would hate to talk about a dollar fifty. Hopefully, we don't go any any lower than this one seventy two. My kitty's playing with some toys in the background, so that's what that sound is. What are you doing? Yeah, she knows. Um, but yeah, again, this there's some worry here. Volume's not looking great. Not looking great against the moving averages. And hey, looky looky, we now have a MACD that's in the negative. I'm seeing some divergence. Again, divergence just means the two lines going away. They're going the wrong way. I like green over red. This looks like green wants to go under. And you have to zoom in hard. But yeah, I see green under red right here on the RSI as well. So I think some things are telling me this kind of might want to come to 170. Hopefully we don't go any lower. And hey, maybe, like I said, this 180 line will hold it as well. All right. Listen, I am momentarily worried. I'm momentarily bearish. There are other stocks in the sector still doing well. And the fact that that's actually happening while Tilray is not doing great is beautiful. Okay, because Tilray used to just lead the pack and where this one went, the rest followed. The rest are willing to ignore the earnings aftermath. You know, because again, it doesn't support, like it's only been two weeks since the earnings dropped. It's still fresh news, right? Like it, it, it is. So I'm not, I'm not entirely, like I said, there are immediate bads. I, I, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, right? But like, I actually see a little bit of strength in some of the bad that's happening because it's not horribly horrible, but we cannot lose. If we lose 172, I am bearish. I am pessimistic. I am scared. I think as long as we can hold that on Tilly, we should be okay. Give me a sprinkle of news, baby. That's that's what we need. Give me any sort of headline, and I think amazing things should come, all right? Because we've seen it already this month. So um, let's look at the weekly. Oof. We're under all five on the daily. We're under all five on the weekly. That's never a good place to be. Um, we're still negative MACD on the weekly, never a good place to be. And yeah, I think you can see it. What was a beautiful December weekly is turning into a very ugly January weekly in terms of the volume, right? So we need a little bit more. We need a little bit more. Otherwise, like I said, I think there's reason to believe that this thing's going to come down just a little bit more. All right. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. I want to look at MSOS next because looky looky here 
All right. I mean, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start. Obviously, it's all beautiful, right? So let's let's start with what we're doing so far. We are over all five and we are starting to take flight. OK, again, I know it doesn't look like anything crazy, silly where it breaks all five and takes off like a D walk or something. Right. But again, MSOS is an ETF. This is not a regular everyday stock, right? Individual stocks will move much, much faster than an ETF because the ETF is, is supposed to kind of be a safety net in some ways, right? Some do well, some do bad. Overall, they do okay, right? So this, this kind of is what flying looks like for an ETF especially. All right. From there, oh man, that that 908 line's been the hunt, right? Because just this view is perfect right here. It's obviously the peak of this September 23 run, all right? And just look, if we can get into this and start working our way up between here and 1050 is nothing but Red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 and a whole mess of nothing, right? So this could be a very, very fast, almost 20% up, all right? And that will add beauty to what I'm saying is already breaking them all and flying, all right? So this is this is looking great. And again, an ETF is is generally I don't want to say never, but generally this this is not supposed to fly like an individual random stock, right? Because this is this is a this is a fund, right? That's that's what the F stands for. This is a this is a fund of multiple multiple tickers, all of them having something in common. In this case, they're all multi-state operators, right? So. Um, I'm loving this. I actually really am. All right. So now let's talk about this 908 line specifically. All right. Yes, we got over once. Yes, we are actually technically still over it because look, we're at 912 and my line's at 908, right? I need to believe that we've broken the line. That is obviously not what happened today or yesterday, okay? The other thing that I'm seeing is this stock really likes to bounce on the eight. So I actually wouldn't be a little too surprised if we come back down to the eight before making another takeoff, you know what I mean? Um, otherwise though, look, I, I, I like what it's doing. I can actually also see it just taking off on Monday as well because what was a resistance, right? It obviously was a resistance right here, might have been broken. We might be using it as a support today and lo and behold, we bounce on Monday, right? So I need more than these two candles to really have a firmer thought. I do believe if we can start getting into 925, 926, I'm actually gonna go ahead and set an alert. Look, I like averaging up, and I mean, there might be some signs that say there's reason to want more here, all right? I think we just really, really need a good, because one more time, let me not, again, I'm not a fanboy. This was a bad line when it rejected it. We fell hard, basically 50% when we got to this and fell. I think it's really, really easy to say this is a much healthier climb than that monstrosity right there, right? So I think that in a little bit is 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 like fruitious. I don't know what the word is, but helpful here, right? Um, that's, that's, a, that's a good steady climb, right? Fly looks like a bunch of different things. That's a rocket flying. This is a nice, you know, helicopter jet flying, right? And I'm good with that, so. Um, MSOS, I'm telling you, I'm liking this. I am. I'm still liking this. I'm loving the fact that Tilray's not doing well, but MSOS is. And again, I realize Tilray is not multi-op, multi-state in the U.S., right? But again, I very much believe Tilray controls the sector. That includes this MSOS ETF that has nothing to do with Canada. I'm telling you, I do believe that, all right? Feel free to disagree. Feel free to throw it in the comments and let me know you disagree too, right? Like, I'm not gonna hate on your thoughts. I'd love to have a good conversation about it, right? But I like that MSOS is doing the job without Tilly. I do, all right? Where are we on the weekly? Looky, looky, and I talked about this on the last video, all right? we're still looking to get over this one. If we can get over this blue line, this 200 moving average, oh man, I am loving the technicals because it looks like we've got some time. And again, I'm talking over weeks, right? We went from daily where I expect things to happen over a couple days. We're now talking a couple weeks. 
I think in a couple weeks we're getting over this thing and we're going to try to make our way towards 11. That's a good MACD right there in the positive. That's a good healthy 66 RSI. I see a divergence on both that I like and that's beautiful volume. Good, 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 good. Makes me believe MSOS has weeks of love here coming, all right? So I'm liking MSOS. I am. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Otherwise, what do I want to look at next? Let's look at high tide next. Because high tide, looky, looky again, all right? Hey, really quickly, if you can please share, if you could please subscribe, it does wonders with these algorithms, all right? So high tide is doing the job, all right? And one thing I talked about on the last video was, oh man, whoa, I also, sorry, I just realized this is our first string of no green, of no red candles in the way. All right, I'm gonna talk about that in a second, all right? But the first thing I wanted to talk about was the 20 moving average, okay? So on the last climb up, we never use the 20 moving average, the orange line. Look, the way my theory works is you can use the eight, you can fall to the 20, the 20 should bounce you right back up. Once you lose it, oh, it's game over, and you can see that happens here, all right? This climb, as we're climbing, we slip and seemingly use the 20 to get us back up. Okay, now obviously we didn't actually land on it. We kind of wicked it right there, but even zooming in, you can see it doesn't happen, right? Oh, my kitty. Are you trying to go outside? Do you want to go outside now? Meow. Like a kitty. Meow. All right, sorry about that. So it uses seemingly the 20 at the very minimum. It's using the 20 line more right here than right here because I've been saying it, we just fell through it like a hot knife through butter, right? Oh man, it just caught my eye. Look, I'm sorry to zoom in and out so much. On this run up, it was nothing but green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. On this recent run up, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red. Hey, this is our first semi string of, of, of only green, all right? I don't like these candles. Look, there is a difference between good, good and all right, good. Okay, if I hit the lotto and that lotto happens to be a billion dollars, oh my my, I'm doing this for free forever, right? If I hit the lotto and it happens to be, it happens to be a free ticket for next week, yeah, you know, my life ain't changing that much, right? So yeah, this is a green day. This is a green candle, right? This actually, you can see this day closes at 184. You can see this day closes at 184. No one lost any money. That's green, right? Um, that's not a great day, but hey, it's not a red day. And I think that's a little bit interesting, all right? Um, let me just zoom out to show it. This is a good channel right here. This is a good channel right here. End of the day, all right? I haven't talked about it yet. I'm obviously gonna talk about it now. Let me know if there were any uh, earnings headlines because it, it should be happening next week, right? But um, earnings can completely wipe away any good technicals or completely magnify them, all right? The easiest example and the most related is Tilray. Tilray was climbing the eight and the 20. Tilray was breaking all five moving averages. It just couldn't confirm if the earnings was good, we would be talking about a 325, if not higher stock. The earnings was not well received, and I don't know if you fast forwarded or not. It kind of makes me feel like we're going to come into the 180s, right? And that's a pretty big drop from what was pushing 250, right? So, um, even though this was over all five moving averages, even though it was above the eight moving average and working its way up, we find our way under. The last thing you want to do is assume with high tide, okay? Now, listen, I keep saying this. I love a stock where the last one, two, three to four earnings have been good. I like that. I love an executive team that doesn't overestimate what they're gonna do. Under, under promise, over deliver, dude. That's the best thing you can do as a company. And I like a company that, that at least seemingly does that, right? Because if you're hitting your earnings back to back to back to back, you know, the one thing I'll say is this, there might be more eyes looking at this than before. There might be more, you know, fine tooth combing going on before. Cause again, 
we're talking about a very significant moment where we legitimately might go as high as 280 if the stock earnings are good. Again, you'll see it go to 230 first. If 230 breaks, yeah, there's no reason to stop it. Or we might fall back to this 150s range, maybe around 160s. If not, again, we'll talk lower if that happens. But earnings is a gamble. Earnings, one little line can, can destroy a whole mess of bullets that are beautiful above it, all right? So I'm loving this. I really, really am. End of the day, earnings is a gamble, all right? So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. If there are any news articles that are starting to say, hey, it seems like they're going to do well. It seems like they're going to meet or beat their earnings. That's going to be optimistic, but nothing will matter until Raj drops the real real. All right. Everything else is just an assumption and a guess until the company CEO, CFO, and everyone else does their, does their job and drops the earnings. All right. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. I'm going to close it out with CGC. Um, last but not least, and I mean, I am, I am, I am, oh, real quick, if you can please subscribe and share, please, 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 it does wonders. Um, I am shocked, I am, I am, I am, I am speechless a little bit at the fact that we're still holding this 455 line. I have been literally for weeks, probably coming into months now, talking about this 455 line, the strength of this 455 line. And I mean, lo and behold, look at that thing, all right? I was also saying that if we lost this, I don't think the 405 will hold much. So again, the fact that this thing keeps holding is obviously a real good thing. Cause yeah, I don't think that this one's gonna hold well. Why do I think that this is a big one? Cause look, this was a big resistance, big resistance, big resistance, big resistance. We've now used this thing more times than I actually expected as well, right? The real issue is though, we're still unable to get over the eight and the 20, all right? If you watch my videos, you know, I don't care if it's three letters, four letters, five letters, if they're selling weed, if they're selling electric cars, if they're selling technology or drugs or medicine, right? Like nothing good happens under the eight and the 20. And the worst thing is the eight and the 20 can drag you down for months and months and months and months and months and months and months. And months. Like it, it, it's crazy what those, those two little colorful lines I got on my videos can do, right? So um, this 455 has gone above and beyond my expectations, all right? This thing needs to get into the 490s for me to like it. I think 490, 490, 4, 491, 492, something like that. Otherwise, it's, it's hard to think good things. Look, we're now coming almost a month away from the reverse split. That's seemingly a decent amount of time. I think I'd want a little bit more time before I stop focusing on this. I think it's still relatively close enough. Hey, what happened with the offering? So obviously they said that there was an offering. They took it off the table because they said that there was some like filing issue or something. Did they finalize the offering? Has it happened? Is it still going to happen? I don't think I've seen many headlines on that. So I'd appreciate a little bit of an update there, but I'll be real honest with you. I don't know what to think of this. I don't know which way this is going to go. And at the very minimum, the 455 is doing better than I expected, right? But yeah, get me into the 490s and I'll believe we'll go up. Otherwise, I'm still here kind of thinking we're going to go down. All right. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Oh my, I appreciate you all so, so much.